Hello, welcome to another episode of This, That, and the Other. This is a site in Prince William County where they have the offices for the Prince William County Schools. I've driven by this many times, it has a fence around it, and I thought it looked like it must have been some type of military base at one time, which I found out to be true. Um, I had a friend of mine who was riding with me. He took footage from the moving car from the passenger side, so it's not, not the best, but I'm going to go ahead and play it for you. I had the radio on, I turned it off. You can see the fence, the tower, radar tower, the gate. And if you look closely, some of these buildings look like they used to be barracks. Go a little farther down, right over here by the tree. Trees, those look like they used to be barracks. And this is, comes to the end of the where the mil, what what was the military base? All right, little information on it. I'm going to get, turn this thing around so you can see me. And there we go. I got some information off the internet about this place it's called Amer Manassas Air Force Station little information, reading a little bit off of an article. Passersby Independent Hill, a small town located in the eastern part of Virginia's Prince William County, probably do not even notice the large concrete fortress-like structure or the tall steel box on stilts among the group of buildings that sit at the southwest quadrant of Joplin Road and Aiden Road intersection. Indeed, the only uses of the facility today include the Independent Hill Elementary School and the Prince William County School Board, plus several radio transmitter towers. The box on stilts is now sanctuary to dozens of pigeons that make it their roost. This was once the home to the U.S. Air Force Defense Radar Unit and is not known to most folks today, and also was not known to many who grew up and lived near this location during the 1950s and early 60s. The Air Force preferred it that way, low-key and out of spotlight. Secrecy was the order of the day. Consequently, consequently, when the small town, when the small station closed in June 1965, quietly and without fanfare, most residents nearby did not even know. Originally, this small base was named Quantico Air Force Station, due to it being situated to the northeast corner of the Quantico Marine Corps Base, which is still active today. The Air Force's 647th Aircraft Control and Warning AC and W Squadron partly of the newly formed Air Defense Command, ADC, began operating long-range radar equipment at Quantico Air Force Base, Air Force Station in March 1952. Actually, the 647th AC&W Squadron had initially been activated at Fort Meade, Maryland in September 1950 to operate a temporary or lash-up radar site until the permanent radio station at Quantico could be constructed and become operational. Then in July 1957, the name of the small base was officially changed to Manassas Air Force Station, the name it would keep until deactivation. This long-range radar site was once of more than 200 such ADC facilities that maintained surveillance activities all across the continental U.S. during the Cold War in support of North American Air Defense Command, NORID. The, this number does not include the 100 or so long-range radar sites all across Alaska, Canada, Greenland, and Iceland that, along with the sites in the continental U.S., provided continual surveillance that would warn of any Soviet bomber attacks, attacks that fortunately never came. Quano, Quantico Air Force Station, identified as, by the Air Force as, as Site P-55, operated a number of different radar types during this brief lifetime and also saw a number of changes take place. The station began manual air defense surveillance duties using an AN-FPS-3 model long-range search radar and AN-CPS-4, later AN-FPS-4, model search height medium radar in 1952, 1958, two long-range height radar finders types AN-FPS-6 and AN-FPS-6B were installed, which replaced the AN-FPS-4 radar. In 1959, now Manassas Air Force Station, Station was integrated into the semi-automatic ground environment, SAGE, a system of NORAD control centers that first 
that use first generation computers to process and display radar data sent via telephone lines from many different radar sites. The squadron designation was officially changed to the 647th Radar Squadron circa 1961. Also in 1961, the station received one of the Air Force's first four high power frequency device, diverse long range search radars such as ANFP S35, a very complex VHF radar set designed to prevent jamming by enemy aircraft. The ANFPS-35 radar was installed in the tall concrete fortress-like tower that still stands today. This radar set, which was replaced by the site's ANFPS-3, used an enormous antenna weighing over 70 tons. Owing to the radar set's size and complexity, it took almost a year before this giant radar was fully operational. Get a little more here. I'm just kind of reading excerpts in this article. In the early 1960s, the perceived national threat was beginning to shift from manned bombers to intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, and submarine-launched ballistic missiles, SLBMs. In 1962, the AN-FPS-35 search radar at Manassas Air Force Station, along with identical model Benton Air Force Base, Pennsylvania, what Air Force Station in Pennsylvania, I'm sorry, was tested to determine if this radar type could be used to detect missile launchings. The results were marginal, so the ANFPS-35 was never adopted for missile detection use. A different radar type would later be developed for that purpose, so the mission of Manassas Air Force Station continued to be that of searching for enemy bombers. 1963, Manassas AFS received one of the high, first high-power frequency device FD long-range height finder radars known as the AN-FPS-26A. This radar set replaced the AN-FPS-6. The site continued to operate the AN-FPS-6B, though. Like the AN-FPS-35, though nowhere as large as the AN-FPS-26A, was also a complex radar set designed to prevent jamming by enemy aircraft. The AN-FPS-26A was installed inside this tall steel box on stilts with the antenna inside a large rubber radome. The tower was, is also standing today, only without its radome. The fact that American Air Force Station received two of the first, very first FD radars is testimony to the site's importance at the time, guiding Washington's southern and eastern airborne approaches. So basically that's what I, able, what I was able to find out on what kind of kind of a base this was? It's not like it had a lot of, a lot of importance to safety of our the nation's capital. It um, closed in June of 1965. I guess maybe there was no need for it after, after that. But that's what I was able to get on, and I've I've driven by it many times, and was curious. I, knew, I, I like I said, I thought it looked like it used to be a military base prior to being the offices for Prince William County School System, and that's what I was able to find like, subscribe, share, looking for a partner. As always, thanks for watching.